In this video I'm going to show you an in-depth analysis of a malicious Windows link file I found on Malwarebytes while I was looking for malicious Microsoft cabinet samples. I think it's great that there's already a write-up on Malwarebytes as it can give you a comparison of the workflow using Cerbero. As a bonus in the end I'm going to show you how to simplify the static analysis of the final payload. The archive contains two malicious link files. Although the hashes differ, the final payload is the same so we can just pick one and focus on that. If we take a look at the command of the link file, we can see that it's rather complex. One part of it involves finding a string in its own data. It's obvious that it's base64 encoded data. So we select it and decode it while also adding a child object to our original file. At this point we can see from the signature at the beginning that the decoded data contains a Microsoft cabinet file. We load our child object accordingly. We can inspect compressed files in the cabinet archive right away. The first file which piques our interest is the PDF document. Since it doesn't contain JavaScript code or any other threat, we can focus on the other files. The important part of this JavaScript code is that it copies the companion executable file to the startup folder and renames it officeUpdate.x. So let's take a look at this executable. By switching to the decompiler, we can quickly identify the main function as it is usually at the end of the stub code added by the compiler and takes two parameters. The main function opens a file from the downloads directory of the public user. It gets its file size, allocates memory and then reads it. Finally, it calls the allocated memory. So let's inspect the executed file. Since we know that it contains x64 machine code, we create a new Carbon database and start to define the code. Once we're done with that, we can start the analysis of the code in a debugger. To debug the code, we can place the executable any way we want but it's important to place the payload in the public downloads directory as that is the place where it is expected to be found. At the start of the code there are two checks which may fail when debugging. You can spot them because they bring you at the end of the function. Just skip these checks by setting the origin in the debugger. After some instructions there is a call to rex which brings us to a function which solves the first set of ABIs. The hashing algorithm for the names of the APIs is very simple. It's a ROAR followed by an addition. I rewrote the algorithm here in Python. By the end of the function, four APIs of kernel32 will have been resolved. GetProc address, load library A, virtual alloc and virtual free. After those have been resolved, the code loads the Microsoft C runtime and resolves the A to I and printf functions. It then uses virtual alloc to allocate 4 kilobytes of memory. A portion of the data of the payload is then decrypted using a XOR operation. We can decrypt the data by selecting it in the hex view and using a filter. The format of the decrypted data consists of a DLL name followed by ASCII integers. The payload then uses this decrypted blob to resolve all other needed APIs. This function parses the decrypted blob, gets the DLL name, converts the strings to integers and then resolves the APIs based on the same hashing algorithm as seen before. Every resolved API address is stored to the allocated memory followed by its hash value. 
we can observe the resolving of the APIs live in the debugger. By the end of the function we'll have a numerous list of resolved APIs. Once the decrypted blob has been processed, it gets re-encrypted again and then the payload starts making use of the resolved APIs. Ideally it would be useful to see which APIs are being called without using a debugger. So I wrote a small script which processes the blob the same way the payload does. I converted the blob data to a Python array using the dev array filter. The code loads each DLL in the blob, hashes its exports and creates an index-based dictionary. In the output we can see all the resolved APIs. At the end of the output we have the index-based dictionary, which we can then copy and use in another script. This small script does nothing else than to enumerate all of the register-based call instructions in the disassembly. It skips instruction pointer-based calls, checks the range of the displacement as it has to fit in the allocated 4 kilobytes, checks if the instruction already has a comment and if not adds a comment with the matching API name. Once the script is run, it will output all of the commented calls. And now we can see which APIs are being called in our static code analysis. Not only the disassembly, but also the decompiled code is now much easier to understand. 